You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. I'm Sarah Connor and you're watching Life in Style with Sarah. On tonight's show we're going to be discussing the infiltration of technology in our lives and how it not only affects us personally but also as a society. The question is, are we overplugged? My first guest this evening is Dr. David Greenfield. He is recognized as one of the world's leading authorities on internet and cyber psychology, including its use and abuse. He is the author of Virtual Addiction and the founder of the Center for Internet and Technology Addiction in West Hartford, Connecticut. My second guest is David Ryan Polgar. He is a writer, attorney, and educator. He is the author of Wisdom in the Age of Twitter and is a tech ethicist, considering the legal, ethical, emotional, and sociological issues surrounding our relationship to technology. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Thanks Great for joining me. So define overplugged to me. What, what, is it, what does that mean? Well, we kind of like that phrase overplugged because it's when you feel so overwhelmed, right? We have this kind of need, this desire to be connected, but at a, at a certain point you can be overconnected where you just feel so kind of just bombarded with technology. And the idea is to manage the technology so it doesn't manage you because we are now so untethered and we're now wirelessly connected via our smartphones and our iPads and Kindles, if you don't control the use of the technology and moderate its use, it will naturally evolve and eat up your time and energy and space. So we've never really had to do that before because the technology was just growing, but now at a point, it's at a point where if you don't limit it, it will limit you. Right, so I think visually, if you can kind of imagine a plug where you keep on plugging parts mm -hmm. in, at a certain point, it's just going to... Right. You know, and we've, we've reached that point, a lot well, of us. Well, and it's, it's the family counter with all the different right, char right, yeah, charging, exactly. yeah, yeah. chargers. Yeah. I mean, it, it's Now kind of the crazy. fire is starting, you yeah. know, so we need yeah. to say, well, occasionally need to unplug there. So let's talk, let's step back, big picture, the mm -hmm. infiltration of technology in our society. So computers were, didn't start that long ago. No. Right? Smartphones are Very relatively new. new. Fastest mm -hmm. adoption of a technology in the history of humankind the smartphone. We've wow. taken almost 80% of Americans are now linked to smartphones. So really? nothing has even come close mm -hmm. to being adopted as rapidly as the smartphone has. Oh, sure. And I think it's only going to speed up because especially in this year, uh, you're going to see a major push uh, in 2014 of Google with uh, Google Glass, and that's the wearable mm -hmm. technology, the smart glasses, and other, other competitors. Uh, so if you have wearable technology, that's, that's really kind of infiltrating uh, a little more. You know, we, we think it's bad when we have something that's vibrating in our pocket, but now mm -hmm. we're always, always going to have that integrated in right. every conversation. Yeah, this is the, 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 the smartphone as we know it is really an interim step. It's mm -hmm. going to be wearable. Everything is going to be wearable. Right. Yeah. It'll either be wired into your clothing, mm -hmm. on your wrist, on your face, your jewelry, implanted. But this is so really. This is, this this is, is going to be archaic in. Oh, yeah. Five well, yeah. Ten years. Uh, Forrester, I, I a so. uh, consulting uh, agency, they, they just made a prediction that within three to five years, they think we're going to have uh, technology that can be either embedded like a tattoo or even ingested. And that's, that's actually what they're working on. Uh, wow. You know, nano types of technology uh, that you would actually have that, that in, inside your body. All right. So you'd, hear, you'd actually hear the information <sighs> through your auditory system, but internally as opposed to having. So you'd be basically online all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. So is this any, is this everybody? Is this a particular group? I know the Census Bureau, its latest report says that it's more white non-Hispanics that are adopting technology faster versus African-Americans, Hispanic communities. Is it in impacting everybody or is it a particular group? Is well, it young people, old people? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that r right now er everything starts with younger, more affluent, more technologically savvy people. But from my experience, mm -hmm. based on the evolution, the adoption of the computer and the internet, 
it's moved into larger segments of society. So I'm, I think the same thing is going to happen with all these technologies. It starts out in one group mm -hmm. and then expands to acceptance in all groups. But something that I kind of want to tack on there is that we use this phrase for people younger than, than millennials right now for that generation, we call them digital natives, but it's kind of becoming a misnomer because when they, when they do studies, we infer that digital native, that that means that they can handle the technology, but the younger you go, the more overplugged, the more overwhelmed uh, those generations actually feel because there's more mm -hmm. societal pressure to constantly be aware. I mean, they've shown that uh, for, for certain teenagers that they feel a sense of anxiety if they don't hear back from their friend within a couple hours. Mm -hmm. They almost assume that they're, or less. they're not alive, right? Instantly. Right. So the idea is if you send a text out, the expectation is you're going to get an instant reply. I mean, that's never existed before. Yeah. The idea that you're the information has to be gotten back instantly. That's, mm -hmm. that's right. new. And I think that I, it seems to me, and, and you can tell me, but that's, that's impacting, I mean, not just young people, it's impacting how we do business. Yes. It's impacting our home lives because you never get a break. And right. there's an expectation. If you get a work email at 11 o'clock at night, you're going to answer it. Well, the interesting thing about technology and education and the workplace is that, you know, the educational community adopted technology very heavy. Uh, the workplace were the first people to adopt smartphones and mm -hmm. digital technology. The old BlackBerry. All, right, the BlackBerry. <laughs> they were the first people to, and then everybody assumed that it would increase productivity. Yes. Wrong. It has not increased productivity. It's actually reduced productivity in the workplace. So now they're starting to come back to, to employees and say, we want you to turn your phone off. We want you to take a break. We want you to not be available 24-7 because that v hyper vigilance, that excess and cortisol that's released from always mm -hmm. being on actually decreases efficiency and productivity. So there are not companies increases. that are actually saying that? Actually doing Oh, yeah? Yes. Really? Yeah, that's becoming more the norm now. So what is it you, so you go, so one way to manage this being overplugged is uh, Turn either it off. by companies or yourself, you say, I'm not available between mm -hmm. X and Y. Yeah, when I go hours. home after 8 p.m., I'm offline. I'm not available. And has that been received as acceptable, do you it's think? It's coming from the companies. The companies themselves, have, they've looked at the data. The data mm -hmm. is incontrovertible. They, they know that the productivity has not gone up as a result of being available all the time. So it's numbers driven. They want people to be productive. And if using less technology mm -hmm. will make them more productive, that's then the direction that's they're going like to go. Well, I think that's always been the problem is that people are always on because they feel this is the, that pressure from their employer that they have yes. to always be on. Yes. But the problem is, uh, you know, like Dr. Greenfield's talking yeah. about, is that once they realize that that's actually not more effective, then you're going to see it come from the top down. So it really is something that's Same thing in schools. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. because yeah. you know, 80% of the time your kid is on the computer or on the laptop or on the iPad or whatever it mm -hmm. is, they're not doing schoolwork. 80% of the time, they're doing something else. So we have this positive valence around technology, this idea that if your kids got the laptop open, they must be studying. They must they be being productive <laughs> or learning something. <laughs> they're not. It's educational. No, they're on it, Facebook yes, or they're on Instagram or they're, they're doing their homework or they're toggling back and forth between a variety of social networking sites or pornography or something else. And then they're doing their homework but 80% of the time is not productivity related. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about technology, I mean, you mentioned um, computers, smartphones, um, iPads, all of these ways to be connected, and it's really the use of it to be connected. So social media, well, that's the irony of emails, it. that kind of thing. We're not talking necessarily about typing a report on, right. you know. But the irony is, is that it's a form of connection that's also socially isolating. So although you're connecting with people via text or via chat or via IMing or via any of these platforms, there's also a socially isolating mm -hmm. and separating component. So you could have people in the same room all texting other people, but they're not talking to each mm -hmm. other. Right. So, as a, so I guess that goes to the, we've talked a little bit about personally it, it impacts us, but so as a society, it's impacting how we relate to each other in group settings. Yeah. Um, We're not, well, there's no need to talk to each other. So like in the waiting room of my office, I'll come out often and I'll see 10 people in the waiting room and no one's talking to each other because each one of them has their device open and it's easier to relate to the device than to another person sitting next to you. Yeah, so is okay. that, just on that thought, is that a little bit different? So I, I used to live in Washington, D.C. I used to commute on the train into, in, uh, into the city and I used to use the 
sometimes, not actually a lot of the times, I just wanted to be by myself, mm -hmm. so I would Newspaper. bring a book. This yeah. is well before these, right. I'm ashamed to admit. But so I would bring a book and I just would be like this. Is it that much different, really? Like, is, it, is that just human nature to want to not have to interact, or do you think this is well, changed Well, the issue, the our issue is about more? choice. No, this, this is far more addictive than a book, mm -hmm. far more compelling than a magazine. This technology sucks you in in a way like we've never seen before. This all operates on a variable ratio reinforcement schedule. This device and the internet in general operate like a giant slot machine. <clears throat> because every time you go on it, if you're searching for information, or you're getting a text, or an email, or you're looking for a photo, or you're checking your, a Twitter feed, or you're checking a Facebook update, you can't predict what you're going to get. You can't predict when you're going to get it. And that's the same reinforcement schedule that a slot machine mm -hmm. operates on. So hmm. in essence, all of these devices have, have operantly conditioned people to respond. And then you pair it with buzzing and beeping. Constantly checking. So constantly it's a classical conditioning. So the minute you hear that buzz, you think there's going to be something potentially good to reward you. You open it up to see if it's something good. So maybe it is, mm -hmm. maybe it isn't. Maybe it's a text from someone you like. Maybe it's a junk mail. So the idea is these things are shaping our behavior and we don't even know it. So it also is kind of, it's, it's frankly making us rude. I mean, it's making us so, it, that's so much more important. Oh, my phone buzzed. I'm going to check my email. Yeah, I think than it's, it's, having a conversation it's taking us with mentally the out of it. I mean, if you were talking about uh, the yeah, different scenario where you had a book, you're still mentally there. So we talk about the mental state and, and the physical state. What we've seen with the smartphone is that you're kind of detaching that, and what we like to call you're, you're kind of becoming a, a, an electronic phantom. So you're physically there, but you're not mentally you're there. Dissociated. You're dissociated. Yeah. So li literally, you're in a state of dissociation, which means that time is passing and you're not aware of it. That's why when you go on mm -hmm. the computer or on the internet, you lose track of time. Nobody can keep track of time when they're online. So they always yeah. think five minutes have gone by and it's really been a half an hour or an hour. When you have a d something that can distort time like that, it's like a drug, and it's changing your biochemistry in a way that a drug does. That's what these devices do. Mm -hmm. So that was going to be my next question. Is it actually physically changing yes, how we're wired? Yes, it is actually physically. It's actually physically changing our biochemistry, and there is some preliminary evidence from um, radiological studies with fMRIs and PET scans that there are some structural changes that can occur in the brain too, especially in younger individuals. That's where most of the studies have been done. Mm -hmm. But it's, so it's changing biochemically by producing elevations in dopamine, but then uh, reductions in dopamine later because the brain gets used to having the elevated level and then you end up with a, a deprived level. Hmm. So people are actually in this sort of yo-yo effect in their moods because dopamine is a pleasure chemical. Um, so there are structural and functional changes that occur as a result of this technology, and now we have the data to really start to, sh to prove so it. So what, what do we do with that? How do we... It, you, do you deal with people who are actually quite addicted, or they're addicted, they're... Yeah, you have to... You need you, counseling you know, we, we, to become... We should clarify that, yeah. that the vast majority of us are overusing or right. abusing or are overplugged. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah. There's definitely. a small percentage, five, six mm -hmm. percent is what I compute based on my research, that meet the criteria for addiction where it's really impacting their life in some major way. Okay. The, the people that we're talking to, that's a small percentage, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. Those people need help professionally to get off of the technology or limit their use. The real interest that I have mm -hmm. and that David is talking yes, about everybody, is else. everybody else. What about the 95% yeah. of us that are overusing it to a point where it's right. really changing the quality of life? So what do we do? How, what uh, do you recommend? Well, I would love to How jump in there. You know, on, on that idea, I think a lot of it is societal. Mm -hmm. What are we expecting? Is there a new normal? So I think what you've seen is we've kind of reached one end of the pendulum and now it's starting to swing the other way. So what's going to happen is, is a little more of this digital etiquette. So when you're in a, in a mm -hmm. group of people and somebody's looking down at their phone and they're having a conversation at the same time, you can only have a conversation with one right. person. It's, it's up to the other individual to say, whoa, 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 that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. not what I expect. Right? We're going to kind of solidify this expectation of 
right. focus of being mindful, of kind of being available in that conversation. It's an do electronic etiquette. That's yeah. what he's talking so about. So do you see people trying to adapt? I mean, well, I, I struggle with this because I don't see mm -hmm. a lot of people having a great amount of etiquette around their Not phones. Yet. But no, n now that it gets, uh, it gets parodied, you know, now that we kind of make fun of it, it is actually mm -hmm. very similar to what happened with the adoption or the lack of adoption of, of the Bluetooth. And that's why it never really caught on uh, extensively as, as, as much as they hope because people who are having a conversation, who are walking at the, the checkout line of a grocery store and they keep their Bluetooth in, a lot of people make fun of them, mm -hmm. right? And they should make fun of them because it, because it seems uh, they're disconnected. Uh, right, it seems mm -hmm. right, disconnected in that moment. So likewise, you're going to see society kind of solidifying what's expected. And on an on a, on a evolutionary level, when people are, appear not there, mm -hmm. people are nervous. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what they're thinking. So there's a degree of safety that comes up or concern about safety if somebody's plugged in what's being said to them what are they saying right. you can't predict their behavior because they're sort of somewhere else whenever you're on the technology you're not where you are so it shifts time and space so when somebody's got that how to be last year, yeah last night you know I, I go to sit down at a table and a guy's on his, on his phone yeah, and, so he, where are they? and he says Oh yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Like, so I had to look at him and say, "Are you <laughs> talking to me or not?" Because right. you'd still be looking ahead, right. and that's always the problem. So, so what so about what about? So you're you're <laughs> saying you're not really there, and I, I see a lot. I have kids who are who are in uh, middle school, high school. Mm -hmm. I, they're both musicians. I go to concerts. I go to perform, and I see people. With, you know, this this is so typical. Like they have their phone like this mm -hmm. in the middle of a concert, and now iPads even more big screens. Yeah. Are they and recording like, the concert? Yeah, right. they're filming the concert. Yeah. And it's like they have no concept that they're blocking the person mm -hmm. behind them, that mm. their light is shining in other people's. It's, it's almost like well, people I got, just aren't I got, aware. I got one step further. They're so busy recording the concert, they're not they're seeing not them. Oh, they're right, not right. Really seeing the concert. Yeah. yeah, it's what they're calling present shock, this idea yeah. that we need to record the present in order to uh, later on experience it. But so that's we've never actually experienced it. Right. right. So when are you going to go back and look at all those videos? And I, I mean, so I can, probably no one ever does. I never go oh, back right, and look at yeah. right. Well, I mean, it's the same thing you think when you see a group of people that are, that are sitting there and they're all on their phone. Well, you probably are on your phone making the next meetup. So you right, go to the next meetup and then you're on your phone. So, so you're always one step So you're never ahead. present. No, in never right. present. So, so there's a big movement. In, I mean, they have these weekends where people go away and they digital detox weekends where you leave your phone. I mean, basically, they're relaxation yoga retreats where you leave your phone and your technology at the front door, and for two days, you're offline, mm -hmm. and then they teach you how to relax and stuff. But I mean, it's, there's nothing new about that except that you're learning to do it. You're learning to turn off your phone. People could do that themselves. You don't need mm -hmm. to go away right. for a weekend. Right. You could actually leave your phone in the car when you go in somewhere for dinner. You mm -hmm. can actually turn it off. Mm -hmm. You can actually turn it off at night when you go home. And the world will still be there in the morning. Well, so a lot of it, you, you ask, well, what can you do? A lot mm -hmm. of it is just the awareness. So once you become aware that maybe you're rude to other people, or you become aware mm -hmm. that you're not spending enough time with your, your child and, and talking to them and looking right. at their, their, uh, their face, uh, then you start changing your behavior. So I think anybody who's watching this is going to say, okay, they critique their own behavior. I critique my own behavior every week. You know. So what do we do about kids? Because kids... You know, they're always, they're coming, everyone, I feel like every month they're coming home with a new app that mm -hmm. yeah. Snapchat is one. Like, yeah. what, a, what the heck is Snapchat? I, I yeah, feel like I'm pretty tech savvy and there's always something. They're always going to be one step ahead and yeah. that's yeah. the funny so thing is that their parents are, are learning about Facebook yeah. and Twitter and then, and then, then their kids Snapchat. are saying, well, that's past that. This, right. this technology. So how do you interact with your kids to manage them from becoming Well, first you have to understand it. this technology, you know, I call them Generation D, they're called Millennials. Mm -hmm. they're generation called D meaning the digital, digital. generation. Mm -hmm. 25 and under, basically. They were raised, they cut their teeth on this technology. So for them, it's like a toaster it is for us. They, they have a facility with it. That's why they're always discovering things way before we do. I'll give my son a phone or something, and he'll be at, in it in a way that I didn't even know it could do that. Right. And um, so the very important thing is parents need to absolutely be aware of what their kids are doing, just like they would with anything else. They have to be aware and try to stay on the same track with the latest, like it's not just Facebook, it's Snapchat right. and Instagram and some of these other things. And there's new stuff coming up behind mm -hmm. these things 
that I don't even know about yet. Um, if you don't know about it as parents, then you're, there's a danger that your kids can get into trouble with it. Mm -hmm. I find it exhausting, honestly. I mean, because I, I yeah. feel like, I, it, right now, I feel like my, my girls are, they're good kids. But I, and I trust them, and I have their passwords to their Instagram accounts and all that stuff. I don't, I will admit I don't check it very often. But I worry that I'm going to be the parent whose kid build a bomb in the backyard because I'm too trusting that they're not, right. like you're saying, they're doing their homework, but actually they're on Facebook. So how do you... How do you stay engaged with that when you're just, it's just it's overwhelming? Um, you know, I don't have a magic answer. <laughs> well, I was going to say a lot of it is just kind of maintaining that, that constant dialogue to, mm -hmm. to understand what they're being on. And Sarah, you mentioned, you know, what the child is doing, but, but I think you also have probably the larger concern about the other people that they might be interacting with, especially if you're talking about younger children. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, right, the online has a tremendous amount of benefits, but you're also going to get kind of a smorgasbord of uh, backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know, that, that we always have problems with. Yeah. Okay. So you just you, have you to need to watch what they're doing. And of course, you want to be friended by them on any of right. these. So you, whenever they send something out, you, you see, see a copy of it. If they refuse to friend you, then they need to be off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about, we, I think you just touched on it, the social media thing of a, a friend of mine said she had a new, a girl who, her goal for the month was to get like a thousand followers on Instagram okay. or something. So okay. what is that phenomenon of feeling, like, it's like our ego is fed by how many people like us mm -hmm. on Facebook or friend us on different apps. How do you, what's it, going on there? I mean, why, a, why has that become so important? It's a distortion and amplification of social acceptance. But now we have it amplified through electronic medium. I mean, before it was, do I have a group of friends that like me? Mm -hmm. Now do I have a thousand followers who right. like me? Mm -hmm. It's th really the same phenomena, but now amplified at a new level and to a point. And of course, now it's being promoted and adopted by businesses because mm -hmm. businesses are saying, please follow us, please like us. Right. Because there's all sorts of reasons from an economic perspective why they want that. Mm -hmm. So individuals are following that same dynamic that the more people that follow them or like mm -hmm. them, the more people really follow them yeah. and like them. Now, the question is, what do they really like? Right. They like what, it, this isn't intimacy that's exchanged on these devices. This is information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between information and Well, intimacy. I always find it entertaining when somebody posts something like, hey, my, my, my cat just died, and then mm -hmm. people don't know. Well, do I like that? Do I, <laughs> do I agree with that? And so you always have that problem. But to no, go like, to your so earlier point, point too, There's no, like, you know, it, it is I like this, it, but I'm sad. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm well, they always like to joke that social media is, is kind of like high school that's constantly going over and over. So, yeah. so it's, it's, you're, you're always going into the cafeteria and saying, who's sitting next to me. So it's this affirmation. But one of the things is you have seen blowback. So even if you look at the evolution of Facebook, Facebook used to more prominently display how many friends a person had, whereas now it's a little more hidden. So Interesting. I'll yeah. check that well, out. Well, if you think about that, that, I mean, it yeah. used to be so prominent, whereas I think they, they did get some, uh, you know, there's a, a conversation of saying, okay, are people just uh, including friends so they can increase their number? The mm -hmm. number was so important. Uh, so I'd be curious to see if, if uh, Twitter will do the same thing. Hmm. Yeah. So, so what are your what are the main tips that you give people for managing their digital diet and their I, I agree with David. Family the, life the, around The biggest technology. thing is consciousness and awareness mm -hmm. of, like, because these devices really enhance your ability to dissociate and to not be conscious of what you're mm -hmm. doing. The idea is to become more conscious of. So I call it conscious computing. The idea is that you. Be aware of when you're using it, in what situations, how much you're using it, mm -hmm. when you turn it on, when you turn it off, how much time you're spending online. If you're looking at a screen instead of your kid, if you're at a ball game or uh, doing something with your children and you're staring at your phone mm -hmm. instead of paying attention to what your child's doing, or if you're at a child's performance and you're so busy recording it mm -hmm. or texting or Facebooking somebody that you're at your child's performance right. that you're missing <laughs> your child's performance. So consciousness, yep. awareness, I think those are well. The, yeah, and the other part that I like to tack on there is the idea of making some firm commitments of times that you're going to going to unplug. Mm -hmm. Think of it like your, your food, right, your think of it like your food time. consumption. It, you're not eating all the time. You're going to put down the food right and mm -hmm. digest. You're going to do the same thing with information. But the problem is, it's kind of like going to the gym. If you if you don't plan it and you say, well, I'm going to do the, I'm going to go to the gym when I have free time. You know what? You never have free time. But if you structure right. it. Every day after work at 
I'm going to go to the gym, then that's in your schedule. Mm -hmm. Likewise, what a lot of people are doing, and which is pretty successful, is they're actually incorporating that. They're, they're saying one day a week, there's something uh, that yeah, a lot of times people day. have. Right, tech-free tech -free day, day, a Sabbath type of day uh, for that. Evening. Yeah, digital mm -hmm. Sabbath or, or a certain certain evening that and you're And it also taking. seems like maybe that would be a good idea as far as dealing with the kids, what the kids are plugged yes. into. is an, a, a time, well, time every you're, you're creating you you're well, also creating yeah, tech-free The other thing issue is to when, you have, what when you have family meals, these things should not should be not the, be at the table. Oh, sure. Yes. should not be at the table. We actually do do that. Oh, <laughs> oh that's good. Yeah. No yeah. devices at the table. Or right. when you go yeah. to a Doesn't restaurant. Doesn't always work, but that's you the know, rule. Restaurants now have a place setting consists of a plate, knives, forks, napkins, a, a cup, and a cell phone or, or a smartphone. Oh, no. So, I mean, if you, want, if you go into any restaurant, mm -hmm. you'll see all of those things. Mm -hmm. The issue is, well, why not leave it in the car? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and or put it in your purse, or put it. Yeah, just don't. Well, if you have it in your purse, you'll you'll hear it vibrate, and you'll want to answer sure. it. Sure. So well, the only issue is if you have kids at home that need to call you. But <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> well, right. so that would What be did people do before exception. that? I know. Did they not? Quarters, other, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Number to the You know, are kids yeah. less safe now than they were before? Actually, the statistics on violence mm -hmm. and the lack of safety in the world are no different now than they were a hundred yeah. years mm -hmm. ago. So maybe don't be so concerned. So the, the idea that kids, that we live in a much more unsafe world is actually not true. So we have the perception that it's more unsafe mm -hmm. because the minute something happens in Kansas, we, we hear, hear about, about it in about New it. York mm -hmm. right. or in Connecticut. So it's so okay to leave the phone in the car. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's okay yeah. to say I'm not going right. to be available right. for an hour yeah. or two. Right, that's great. Right, well, and that's a new thing to kind of take control. The other part that I like to mention is when people are having dinner, something that, that just came out recently is that they showed that if people have their smartphone on the table, they're less apt to get into a serious conversation. Mm -hmm. because because they're afraid they're going to be interrupted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they know that. Because imagine if, if, if you said, yeah. David, you know, tell me about your life. And I said, Sarah, and I started telling you the serious story. And then, the story. Goes off. And then they, I'm, I'm right telling now. you about, you know, some death in the family. Hold, and then it goes off, right? Yeah. Or even if it just rings. Right. You know, I, or buzzes, I find it's that really, really Don't deflating. forget, this right. thing has conditioned you, and mm -hmm. it's neurochemical. Yes. So yeah. what you, you don't know that there's dopamine getting elevated mm -hmm. in your brain you can't recognize right. that but you're you respond to it because we do things that are pleasurable yeah so right. this is really in a sense right. if it starts flashing what is, yeah. what is it oh yeah. it's important nope group on yeah so right. the, big, the two <laughs> biggest tips be mindful mm -hmm. and take the phone and definitely but also kind of to, to uh to really establish some firm times the, the tech free zones but also maybe a, a day uh and then also activities that, that, uh, that children would really like that don't involve it. Right. Hiking, obviously, right. is a highly yeah. recommended That's area. Right. Outdoors are a great antidote mm -hmm. to technology, sure. without the technology. Yeah, way. because I think what a lot of people find is that the default is always going to be the technology because it's, it's easy. Right. It's, it's, it's easy, pleasurable. Yes. But once you remove it, it's not like people don't like nature. Once yeah. they get out in nature, they've they say, done well, some great. great studies where they've taken kids mm -hmm. off the technology, brought them into the woods, and within three days they've detoxed and they're happier than they've mm -hmm. ever been. Thank you yeah. both Thank so you. much. This welcome. was a great discussion. I learned Definitely. a lot. Some disturbing facts, but, <laughs> but some encouraging facts Definitely, too. Right. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. You're very welcome. You've been watching Life in Style with Sarah. Don't forget to tune in next month to a brand new episode. <laughs>